Hi everyone, I'm Nicole and this weekend I want to take part in Becca's Bacoplathon. <laughs> Like last time I came back to booktube it was because Becca was doing a readathon. Becca keep doing readathons please. <laughs> I say came came back to I didn't technically leave or I didn't intend to leave. Um, last few months have been rough like really rough uh, with loss of a loved one, um, mental health and all the fun stuff that comes with mental health so <sighs> it's been rough but um I really want to but I really wanted to do this and it's I think or it feels like the first time I've wanted to do anything in a while so I figured I'd just try and do it <laughs> basically for anybody who doesn't know which I don't think is anybody Be uh, Becca's Bacoplathon is hosted by Becca and the Books I will of course leave her link in the description but like I say pretty sure if you're here you know her um, and I'm sure you also know that the Bacopoli um, is a series on her channel which she uses a Monopoly but Bacopoli a customised board to pick her TBR each month yeah I did this before uh, it was like a month long round but I did it in 24 48 hours kind of been 24 must have been like a weekend or something and I'm doing it again I really actually enjoyed it this time and it actually kick-started my reading again because I'd gotten into a reading slump um this what I'm feeling now is more is much more than a reading slump but I am hoping that it might kickstart something in me again so yeah that's what we're gonna do the roles this time the first two roles were in the announcement video that she showed and they were on twitter and they were a dark cover and a fantasy book and she did say that we could double up on prompts and so to help myself a little bit i think that's probably what i'm going to be doing unless a miracle happens and the book that i have selected is it's a dark cover <laughs> and um I'm like 90% sure that it's fantasy and it's Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Um I've heard a lot of good things about the book, I've heard amazing things about the TV series and I kept telling myself I'm not going to watch the TV series until I read the book. I don't know why, like sometimes I'm quite happy not to, I always prefer to and I always think oh I'm gonna read the book before I watch the thing but realistically I don't always do that because most of the time I don't know that it was a book beforehand but yeah this one I did and I kept telling myself that I was gonna read the book first and um so yeah I'm gonna finally read the book right now it's Friday right now it's Friday uh I have no idea what time it is <laughs> it's after half three I know that much and uh the readathon starts at midnight and it's going to be really interesting because the entire readathon is live, like on different people's channels, but it's completely live, which is just, it's such a cool concept. I could be wrong, but I really don't think it's been done before, like across an entire weekend, 48 hours, people are going to be live. Is it me? No. Have I frozen? No. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Right, cool. Oh, Zaf's back. It's just like, let's get all of the technical difficulties out of the way now. <laughs> yeah, Starla's still frozen. <laughs> yeah, Starla's still frozen. <laughs> but yeah, welcome. Um, I will let everybody introduce themselves. <laughs> sprinting in like about seven-ish minutes yes i'm excited yay me too me too but i just oh my gosh <laughs> it's, it's just nivea rehydrate moisturizer and uh oh. don't, don't do that with my lips <laughs> i can't do it with my lips the lips just <laughs> 
I literally look like the old hag that's about to kill Snow White, Lexi. <laughs> You're Snow White now, I'm the old hag right now. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to play a game. <laughs> Even people who aren't booktubers, it's just like lovely to chat with everyone who's readers all day long. I love it. Yeah. Great. I keep sliding into my eyes now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I look, I'm the one talking everything. Happy New Year! <laughs> Someone commented if Becca was asleep, it'd be the live that never ends. <laughs> Oh my god. Are you guys, is everybody ready for the surprise? Uh huh. Um, yeah, I came with three shots. Wow. I need to grab one. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Whoa. Yay. Look, I came here to read, okay? I have, I came here to, I have read. to go get a fourth shot now. You want to hear me? Go on. Then. Okay, then. Before, um, before we do shots, you've all successfully survived. The 48 hour book up with on. You made it. Round of applause effort. to Becca mm. because yes. this is, has been amazing. I've seen a lot of people in chat, and I myself know that this was like got me out of a major reading slump. And this felt like such a community event. It was so well done, it was so good. It was great. I felt like I was hanging out with friends all weekend. Okay, it is Tuesday afternoon, evening-ish. I had my jab earlier today. So I'm gonna do this now because uh, I might be coming down with flu-like symptoms. So let's get straight into it. The first book that I read was Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I ended up rating this about like 3.5, 3.75. I really enjoyed it. Essentially we follow a bunch of different characters as I think is kind of I guess a theme with I think both Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I've read American Gods by Neil Gaiman and Reaper Man by Terry Pratchett and both of them go off and start talking about different characters within the book and sometimes you don't really know why that character is important until like midway or to the end of the book that's something that's something i found with both of those actually and that's something that i found with this one so i like that and i didn't like that um and that was how i felt with both american gods and reaper man i like it because when everything comes together at the end, it's worth it. It's worth it to know who these characters are, how they're tied in, and what their background is. Therefore, you have like a deeper connection with those characters. I also didn't enjoy it because I guess it's like with any book where there are multiple perspectives, you have your favourite. And usually with multiple perspectives, you get maybe two or three characters or maybe many characters, but they all follow along almost sequentially. And unless something really throws that out, that's gonna be the order. Whereas with something like this, you never know when you're gonna get back to the characters that you're actually really interested and invested in. I also got frustrated with the tangents and that's something I think American Gods had and again, Reaper Man has to an extent. So it's not all that surprising if they had it in their separate books, of course they're gonna have it in their combined book. I think they have like a tendency to draw out information and then put additional information in footnotes which is really interesting because again you get this additional information which you don't necessarily need but it's quite amusing or it's quite interesting to have but I did find that it was taking me longer to read I feel like because I kept getting pulled out of the story to read these additional notes about oh, this thing and it happened quite frequently throughout the book. Something I did appreciate was that there were distinct, if not chapters, there were there were distinctions between different scenes. So with Reaper Man, it's like, if I remember right, which I think I do because it was something that really frustrated me, it's one continuous story. And even though there are multiple people that you're following, it doesn't distinguish between which characters you're following at which time so you could be following a certain set of characters 
and then it goes on to some other ones and they're suddenly outside and you're like well hang on a minute how did they get outside <laughs> when they were inside doing something else and then you realize it's completely different characters um so something i appreciated in this one was the distinction between the scenes that you're following so that's what i didn't 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 like about it for those who don't know good omens is about Armageddon, end of the world, which comes about when the Antichrist is born and when he gets to 11 years old, that's when Armageddon is meant to happen. So thanks to some hospital shuffling, the Antichrist is sent to live with a family, but also thanks to said shuffling, uh, he gets sent to the wrong family. So they essentially lose the Antichrist. So basically what you have is the boys upstairs and downstairs want to bring about Armageddon. You have an angel and a demon hovering around the wrong kid. You have the four horsemen of the apocalypse who are around, as well as a witch who lives through her prophecies despite being killed or burned at the stake centuries before. Um, overall, like I say, I did really enjoy this book. I heard that it was funny. The concept is funny to me. I think with both Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, their concepts are always really funny, like Reaper Man, like Death Takes a Holiday, and this is a funny concept as well. There are amusing parts, but I can't say it's probably not like my sense of humour. It's similar in a sense to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Guide to the Galaxy, which again is amusing but probably isn't necessarily my sense of humour. Part of me does wonder if the TV show will be funnier. Blasphemy, I know. But I do want to watch the TV show so I think that'll be really interesting to find out. The second book that I read was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I started this book during the readathon and I finished it after midnight. I finished it after the second live show which I believe went on until about 4am if I remember right and uh, after which I was like I'm just gonna finish my book. So I really really enjoyed this one overall. I rated it four stars. In With the Fire and High we follow a young girl named Emily who had a baby around the age of 14-15 and I found it really interesting to read about a young girl who had a baby while still in school, juggling her studies, making decisions about her future and of course it included a pesky romantic interest who was much more romantic than pesky if you ask me. As I say we follow a young girl named Emini. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Um, in the book there was a whole section on how you pronounce Emini's name. This is the um, spelling of her name so I believe I'm pronouncing that right but if I'm not feel free to correct me. So as you can possibly tell by the cover and the title Emily loves cooking but not only does she love cooking but she actually has a gift for it in the sense that her cooking has the ability to mentally and emotionally transport people to specific moments in their lives and unlock potentially forgotten memories. That's how I perceived it anyway. Some characters said it was magic, she just thought she was a really good cook. It's Emily's last year at school and she has to decide what she's going to do about college, if she wants to go to college or if she wants to go straight into work and support her daughter. She's trying to get good grades, she's trying to keep up with all of her classes and raise enough money to go on a school trip. There's, there's a lot going on, like senior year stuff I guess in America. <sighs> and it's like, imagine trying to do all of school like classes, homework, friendship, all the teenage hormones, like everything alongside having a kid. Her own father, while he isn't around in person, while a complicated relationship, she does seem to have a decent relationship with him. Like work in progress, I would say, kind of relationship. She has a really good relationship with her abuela or her grandmother. She has a really good relationship with her mother's side of the family who, although she doesn't see them, she does keep in regular contact with them. So Emily in this book is described as being black American on her mother's side and Puerto Rican on her father's side. Family is clearly placed as like high importance in this book and to 
Emily clearly not only in that she has her own daughter to support but in her interactions with her grandmother and in the way that they support each other and even in the way that she keeps in contact with the family that she isn't able to see as frequently. I will say some of the family moments in here really made me tear up and the difficult moments felt so real and authentic. In terms of her friendships, I love her friendship with Angelica. Again, it felt like a real friendship. A friendship where they support one another, a friendship where Angelica isn't completely forgotten as soon as the romantic interest comes along. I feel like we have so many books who sacrifice friendship for the sake of drama and personally that's something I'm a little bit tired of seeing and I just really enjoyed seeing a real and authentic friendship that felt like it could be translated into real life which isn't something I feel like we get even from contemporaries <laughs> to be completely honest and so it was just really nice to have like a healthy friendship shown where it's not always drama and arguments and they're honest with each other just I, I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed reading that friendship speaking of the love interest we have Malachi I adored Malachi I think he set the standard pretty high he is so sweet he doesn't pressure Emily into friendships or relationships or anything else and he was just there for her when she needed him i think he brought her out of her comfort zone but he didn't demand that she smash the walls down entirely when she wasn't ready he backed her up when the easiest thing probably would have been to back away he prioritized her very real struggles and dilemmas and their friendship over his feelings and while he never backed away from his feelings while he never lied about or hid how he truly felt for her. He didn't demand that she know exactly in that moment what she wants. And equally, she never strung him along throughout the entirety of this book when they were both mentioned in a romantic sense. She was open and honest with him, which honestly, I really appreciate. Because again, I feel like so many authors go for cheap shot drama caused by lack of communication. And personally, one of my pet peeves is when an entire plot or subplot could be resolved with a conversation. So this for me was so refreshing. And I just, I thoroughly enjoyed, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It wasn't the main focus of the story and it didn't overtake her life completely. And I just really liked the element to it so that is it for those two books as you know um i did pick a third one which was my chance card which was my take a chance on me card um which will you will see more of in my next video which is i think a tbr yeah i think my next video is the tbr so you'll see more of those in that one and how hopefully they're going to be incorporated more in my reading but it chose the enchantment of abigail brown i figured it as i pulled it even if it's not for the readathon i may as well read it i'm only yeah i'm on the second chapter so i'm really not that far into it um i can tell you it's descriptive so far so far it's very descriptive hopefully i will finish it hopefully but that my friends is that thank you so much for watching did you participate if you did i have no doubt you read more than i did because i saw so many people who were like i've read four books i've read eight books i've read ten books which is absolutely insane and incredible and amazing a little bit envious i'm not gonna lie but as i said at the beginning of this video last few months have been a struggle um and so two books to some people is nothing but to me especially at the moment they are everything i definitely took it easy i helped my dad with some work i did some cooking i did some other stuff i know i did i can't remember what it was but i kept getting interrupted this weekend so i know i did other stuff but it was such a good and fun weekend i tried to make it to like as many of the sprints as i could i think for the 8 to 12 ones i mostly slept through i think i caught the ends of them um but i was staying up until like four or five and then crashing and weirdly, after I finished the Fire on High, after the readathon, I finished it. It was like 20 to 7. I was like, yeah, I could stay up. <laughs> I didn't. I went to sleep. But yeah, all of 
the sprints, all of the games, all of the hosts and guests and just all of the people that took part, it was so good and it felt like a real community thing. And on a personal note, it just felt so good to do something. It felt really good to just have a laugh. <laughs> and like I say, it just felt a lot like the community was coming together and it was just really cool to see <laughs> and to witness and to be a part of. Thank you so much to Becca for hosting. Thank you to all of the people who came together and made this happen for everyone because it was such a fun experience and I really hope there's another Bacopoli readathon. I'm just, I'm itching for a readathon now and I'm all, I'm itching for sprints as well. <laughs> I'm itching for like readathons and sprints. Readathons, I'm awful at readathons so that should tell you something about how much I enjoyed this one and sprints I'd never done really before this weekend I don't really seek them out I don't usually with readathons and they're just like oh we're gonna do a sprint on this day I usually end up missing them <laughs> but it was actually a lot of fun and I actually want to take part in more sprints now so yeah that's all I have for you thank you so much for watching if you took part let me know what you read if you've read any of the books I've mentioned let me know what you think and Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. It's Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and James Herbert. Nope. As well as a witch who lives through her prop as, um, as well as a witch who lives through her prop.